Hey everyone, Maya here from My Storybook, and I'm so excited that you are here to join me this May for My Storybook's Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month Special Read Aloud event, where every weekday this month I will be sharing a new interactive read aloud featuring an Asian character or a children's book that was created by an Asian author or illustrator. There are so many amazing books in this month's read aloud lineup, so if you're curious to see what else we've been reading or will read next, go ahead and click on the link below to my blog in the description and there you'll find the full read aloud lineup to see what reading adventures we are going on this month. There are so many amazing books to share and I'm so glad that you are here to join along as we read all about these very special stories that share Asian voices with all of us. Now my friends, today's interactive read aloud is a biography book meaning it's a book about someone's real life, a real person and their life and this one is about Maya Lin, an Asian American artist, and she is famous for creating the Vietnam War Memorial. So this is a very special wall, a very special art piece that helps us remember all of the soldiers and people who died fighting in the Vietnam War, which was a very big war in our history and an important war where a lot of people did lose their lives. They wanted to find some way to honor all those soldiers and people who fought in this war. And Maya Lin was the one who created the design to come up with this very important memorial to give honor and to help say thanks to all of these soldiers and people who fought during this time. So we are going to read about her story, about how she became an artist, how she came up with this amazing creative idea, and how she implemented it to create this amazing Vietnam War Memorial that you can now go visit today. All right, friends, double thumbs up if you're ready to begin. Excellent. Let's check it out. So the title of today's interactive read aloud is Maya Lin, Artist Architect of Light and Lines, designer of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. So she created the Vietnam Veterans Memorial and here she is. She's actually standing in front of it on this cover so you get a sneak peek of what it looks like. So what do you notice about what the Vietnam Veterans Memorial looks like? Right? It looks like this black wall. You might see these little white lines. Those are actually names of people. And you can even see, she sees her reflection. So it must be like shiny enough for you to see yourself reflected back. Well, let's talk about the author and illustrator. Can't forget them, the people who helped create this book. The author of this book is Jean Walker Harvey. And it was illustrated by Dao Pumirak. So that means Dao Pumirak drew all the pictures you're about to see and Jean Walker Harvey wrote all of the words in this story, telling the story of Maya Lin's life. And this book was published by Macmillan Kids. So huge thank you to them for letting us read it aloud together and learn about Maya Lin's story. So we took a look at the cover. We saw what the Vietnam Veterans Memorial can look like. Let's learn a little bit more about Maya Lin's life. Give me sparkle fingers if you're ready to get started. All right, let's begin. So here's our title page. It tells us the title of our book, Maya Lin, Artist Architect of Light and Lines. It has our author and illustrator, our publisher, Macmillan Kids, who helped make the book. Ooh, wow, this is a beautiful scene, landscape of nature. And oh, what do you notice about this nature scene? <laughs> Lots of green. I noticed that this mountain here almost, if you look closely, it almost looks like an animal, right? This hill, I see a tail. These might be little legs. Uh -huh. In the woods by her childhood home, Maya Lin played with her brother and explored and climbed the many rolling hills. One she named the Lizard's Back. <gasps> so do you see now why she named it the Lizard's Back? It does look like a lizard, right? Ooh, so Maya Lin has a good imagination. Hmm. On long walks alone, she searched for birds in the forest. Maya sat still as a statue, hoping to tame rabbits, raccoons, chipmunks, and squirrels. Do you see all those different animals, my friends? Do you see a rabbit? Point to a rabbit. How about a raccoon? Chipmunk? And squirrels? And there's lots of birds, right? Even baby birds. So it looks like she really enjoys nature, right? And she's very patient and calm so that the animals actually come around her because they can sense she's so calm. In her house full of light and open spaces, Maya read books and played chess with her brother. Do you like to play chess? And with paper and scraps, she built tiny homes. Oh, look at these little things she's making out of recycled materials. 
That'd be a good craft for you, my friends, if you want to find some paper and scraps and make little buildings and make your own little town. So even as a little kid, she's very creative, making things, building things. Her parents had fled China at a time when people were told what to be and how to think. Her parents never told Maya what to be or how to think. So it sounds like her family used to live in China, but they left because in China, it sounds like they were trying to control people's lives and made them do things or think things they didn't want to. So it looks like they came to America so they'd have more freedom to think and do what they wanted. Now, did they ever make Maya Lin do things or think things that they wanted her to do and think? No, right? They gave her freedom to have her own thoughts and do what she really enjoyed. Now, of course, Maya Lin has to follow rules. Everyone has to follow rules to stay safe, but you get freedoms to do what makes you happy. Maya grew up with art. Her father was an artist who made art with clay. <gasps> have you ever used clay? What do you like to make with clay? Ooh. Her mother was a poet who made art with words. <gasps> do you like to write poems, my friend? Yes. So she has an artist, a poet. She watched her father form a pot from a mound of clay without plans or drawings. Maya, too, thought with her hands as well as her mind. So she doesn't need to plan it out. She just does it as she's building and creating. The ideas come to her while she's making it. My friends, how do you like to create things? Do you like to have a plan before you get started? Or do you like to just start and then see where your creativity takes you? How do you like to make art? Yeah. Wow. Sounds like a great process. One day when Maya looked at the patterns of light and lines on the ceiling of her college library. Oh, so now she's all grown up in college. She imagined she would become an architect who created buildings with art, science, and math. So architects are people who design buildings. And to design buildings, you need to know a lot about art to make it beautiful, about science and math too. So you know how tall you need to make the buildings, how why they need to be to support each other to make the whole building so that it stands. You need a lot of science and math to figure out what shape everything needs to be, how it all fits together. <gasps> Look at all those light and lines she sees. What do you notice about the light and the lines in this library? Yes, huh? it's very beautiful. While studying overseas, Maya wandered through countries and cities, gazing at buildings of all types, new and old, learning all she could. So here, each rectangle I noticed shows me a different building from a different place that she traveled to. What do you notice about these different buildings? Things about the patterns, the lines, the shapes, the lights, colors. What do you see? Wow, right? Yeah, there are so many different types of buildings here. So many different ones, all different colors and all different ways that they are built. In her last year of college, Maya entered a contest to design a memorial to honor soldiers who died during the Vietnam War. A memorial is something you make to help remember people or something. The contest rule said the memorial must blend with a park setting and include the name of every soldier who died fighting or was missing. Almost 58,000 names. That is a lot of people who died or went missing during that war. 58,000. So her job is to design something that fits into the park setting. So something that fits into nature and can have every single person's name on it. If I look down here, this is a scene of the Vietnam War. Then Vietnam, the helicopters, the soldiers. Well, I remember that Maya Lin really liked nature when she was younger. So I'm thinking she's going to have some good ideas about how to create something, design something that blends in with nature. These rules rang true to Maya. She knew the power of names. Maya believed that a name brings back all the memories of a person more than a photo of a moment in time. So Maya thinks names are super important. Remembering someone's name. My friends, what is your name? Can you share with me your name right now? What a beautiful name. Your name holds all the memories you have, all those moments, all the special, unique things about you. Your name is very powerful. Back at school, Maya sculpted a model with mashed potatoes, then with clay. She sketched a soft space of green and blues, and before mailing her entry, she put her thoughts into an essay. 
So this is part of her process, right? She's trying to design and figure out. So she's using mashed potatoes to, as like a clay to make a design, my friends. Maybe you should try that. Make some mashed potatoes and try to make art out of it. That'd be really cool. Then she makes the design out of clay. Then she sketches it down and writes an essay about what she wants it to look like. She has to describe why she chose the design. What does it look like? Help the person who's going to read her entry imagine it. She sends some pictures and writes all about it. She wrote that her long polished wall would be a quiet place to remember all those who died during the war. A place to be experienced by walking down then up past names that seem to go on forever. So here you can see a sketch, a drawing of her design. And what do you notice about the design, the shape, the lines, right? It looks like a triangle, right? It's like a V shape. It's got a point on the end. So she's saying people can walk up its names, walk down it. It just looks like an endless wall of names on this black wall. Names that go on forever. The contest received so many entries, enough to fill an airplane hangar, enough entries to fill a whole airplane. Lots of famous architects and artists entered. The names of the contestants were hidden from view. So, so many... Famous artists and architects also entered their designs, but they didn't show the name of who entered the contest. That way people couldn't like choose their favorite artists. They didn't have any idea who. Why do you think they did it where you couldn't see the names of who the design belonged to? Right, they probably did it so that you would just base your decision on what the design actually looked like. So you didn't do it based on who your favorite artist was. Like if you saw the name, you're like, oh, I like that person. I want their design, right? You just did it based on which one you actually liked and saw and liked the design. So here I see all the different designs. It looks like they um, displayed them up so that you could see. And if you take a close look, can you see some different designs? What do you see? All sorts of different designs, huh? Oh, and there's Maya Lynn's design right here. Out of 1,421 entries, Maya's design was chosen. Maya Lin, we choose you. Simple yet strong, creative and new. But when they found out Maya was the winner, the judges were shocked. She wasn't famous and she was a young woman still in school. Maya was as surprised as the judges. All with excitement at first, but then people objected. Objected means they disagreed. Uh-oh, now all of a sudden they're saying they don't want her design. Some said her design looked like a bat, a boomerang, a black gash of shame. Their angry words stung Maya. So how did they make her feel? <coughs> Hurt, right? And sad that they're being so mean about her design. For months, public hearings were held. Some people wanted to change the design. Maya was young, but she was brave, and she didn't back down. So even though these people are like, change it, we don't like it. Did she back down and say, okay, okay, I give in. She was brave. She said, no, this is my design. I think it's great. If I was chosen, I deserve to make my design. That is very brave. My friends, you got to stand up for what you believe in. Oh, and what's going on here? <laughs> it looks like they're beginning to create her design. Finally, her design was approved. Maya worked with a team of architects and engineers who devised plans to excavate the land and build the wall. So she's working with other people. She can't build it all by herself, right? So she needs a whole team of people to help her dig up the land and start building parts of the wall. The granite was cut and polished, so the rock that they needed to build the wall, and engraved with the soldiers' names. They carved the names into the wall. The earth was dug up, and Maya watched the panels suspended in space set in place. So they made the panels of the wall out of rocks. They carved the names in and then the rocks are so heavy, right? That people can't lift it. So they use these big trucks and they're lifting each black panel into place into the shape of the wall. The first time Maya visited the finished wall, she searched for the name of the father of a friend. When she touched the name, she cried just as she knew others would. Thousands came that Veterans Day to see and touch and remember. Salutes. Hands on hearts honoring. And every day since then, visitors have done the same. So my friends, people who knew people who fought in the war can go to the wall and find the name. And look it, when they see the name, it's pretty cool because you look at the name, you can touch it. And you see yourself reflected back in the wall, right? You can see your reflection. So it's almost like you're connecting with that person again. You can see them and be there with them and remember them. And remember how they gave their life to fight for you too and to fight for others. Look at all of these people. Do you see Maya Lin? Can you find her? 
There she is right here. She's touching the law, finding the name of her father's friend. And look at all these people. A beautiful way to remember everyone who died and fought in this war. And look how it seems like it goes on forever. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial was the first of Maya's many works of art and architecture, memorial, sculptures, structures, and spaces inside and out. Each piece is different, but all share Maya's vision. She wants people to be part of her art. Look, touch, read, walk around, sit by, and think about. Right, so at the wall, you can do all those things. You can look at it, you can touch it, you can sit by it, walk around it, think about it. And just like when she was a child who named a hill the lizard's back, Maya named her projects often words from nature. Names such as the sounding stones, topo, the wave field, 10 degrees north, reading a garden. So these are some of her other art creations and look how they all are connected with nature. She even names them out of nature. She seems to do a lot of nature art, building with nature art. What do you notice about some of her creations? Yeah, pretty cool, huh? But this is the wave field. Looks like it's waves of grass, 10 degrees north, sounding stones. Oh, this is the reading a garden. If you look at this garden, it looks like there's like words on it so that you can't like read part of the garden. After naming a piece, the final step is shaping her artwork. Maya Lin, the artist architect, is ready to dream, think again, and create something new. So after she names it, she shapes it, she designs it, she creates it, and now she's ready to dream, think, and design something new. So here's her studio. And look at all these different projects she has going on. Wow, my friends. After this story, I would go and research some of Maya Lin's artwork and see some of the things she's created. <gasps> Here's a little note about more about Maya Lin. And oh, look at here is Maya Lin holding a model of her Vietnam Memorial, Vietnam Veterans Memorial design. So model is when you build it, a small version first, so that they can imagine what it looks like. And here she is with it. And my friends, that brings us to the end of this story about Maya Lin. Wow, what an incredible story about Maya Lin, such a creative artist, my friends. What was one of your favorite parts about this story? Or what was something you learned about Maya Lin? Right, I loved how she created a lot of artwork from nature, how she stood up for her designs and didn't back down even when people were mean about them, right, and wanted her to change them. She believed in what she created and knew that she wanted to do it, so she never gave up. All right, friends, well... This, it was such a great story to inspire creativity too. And I know all of you have amazing imaginations. So I suggest that after reading this, you go out and you get your own pieces of scraps or papers or old boxes and cardboard and go ahead and go design, go build something, try starting and just seeing where your creativity takes you. You are going to create so many amazing things. Well, my friends, if you do create those amazing architect designs, please do reach out to me. I'd love to see them. You can find me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, on the blog, here on YouTube. All the social media links can be found down below. I love hearing from all of you. And if you do want to keep up with our reading adventures, my friends, please be sure to subscribe to my story, but YouTube channel by clicking on that subscribe button and giving this video a thumbs up. I am so happy that you're here to join me for Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month and all of our read alouds this month of May. So my friends, I hope I will see you for the next reading adventure. But until then, happy reading.